up around here. 15 years ago, I started my first day of carpentry. And in today's exciting episode, we're gonna go to the first three jobs I ever worked on. Taking photos. Uh, videos. Videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We pulled up, parked there, and I walked across into my very first construction site. Like, I was, what, 17, 18? And there were people everywhere, like 100 people walking in every direction. I was so distracted by it that I walked in and a digger, like a bucket, had swung over my head. I didn't even realize it until the next day where my old man said, as soon as I dropped you off, mate, you walked in and a digger swung over your head. Watch out next time. So this is Samford's uh, fishing company and the building itself has been here for like 100 years but what we were doing was renovating all of this. This was just a timber frame when I got here all the way up and I, I didn't know what I was doing when I was here. I was so green, hadn't really done any building and this is where I learned the first year of building. This here is the first deck I ever helped build. First one. Fifteen years ago, like I said, I really didn't know anything about building then. I didn't know anything. And to be honest, I didn't want to know. I actually hated carpentry when I first started. I kind of got pressured into it by my old man who's also a carpenter. He was basically just worried about me. He wanted me to do something. I wasn't doing anything with my life. I dropped out of school, all that stuff. And um, he got me the job and said, you better stick at it. So for the first year while I was at this job, I just didn't enjoy it. I, mean, I could hardly hold a skill saw straight. I couldn't fire a nail gun. I couldn't swing a hammer properly. I remember one day after I'd finished sweeping everything up and the foreman literally had nothing else for me to do. He gave me a nail punch and a hammer and he told me to go around all the wall frames and punch the nails in so the plasterboard could go on. So like, he literally just made a job up. So I was very green to carpentry. The only thing that got me through that period was turning up every day. And gradually you get better. Our next job isn't too far from here at all. It's kind of right behind, right, right behind this general area here. We're gonna have to go. We're gonna have to go downtown a little bit to see it. There it is. There, that big blue building right there. So this is the job where I got my first pay rise as a carpenter. You know, I could, I could put a bit of plasterboard on, I could help people frame, and um, the foreman I was working with sort of rewarded me for that. We arrived on the site when it was all like, and it was up to this level, and it was just, it was just concrete, concrete slabs, kind of like that commercial bay tower downtown. You know, just concrete slabs and concrete pillars forming the basic structure of the building. And by the time we went into it, we just did the internal parts where the toilets are and it'll be a lot easier to show you in person. In fact, why don't we go and try and go inside the building? I'll hide my skateboard in the tree here. If the next shot is me inside the building, then you know I succeeded. Should be alright, should be alright. Alright. This is completely different to how I remember it. Completely. Let's try another level. <sighs> this is how I remember it. So this is the core of the building and we spent a lot of time doing these walls here. It's, it looks like metal on the outside but it's encased in like a powdery kind of concrete 
and it's a sort of tongue and groove shape and it all locks together like this. Then you screw it to a track at the bottom and the top. And that's what makes this wall. And then you've got plasterboard over the top of it. And we spent a lot of time doing this here, this negative detail, because originally, I think something like five floors were done incorrectly. The negative detail was at the wrong height. Me and one of the guys I was working with had to rip out all the negative details on every floor and uh, and do it again. A lot of work went into that right there. All right, let's go back outside. <sighs> ah, success. I didn't get it in illegally. That was uh, perfectly legal. Another job I did on this one was the gutter on the very top of the building. We had to form like a timber box gutter and then that got waterproof, but it was like right on the edge of this 30 story building. All the way up there. <laughs> let's go. All right, the next job. The third job, 2005 I think, was Rialto Cinemas, it's outside of the city. Let's go. At Sanford's Fisheries, the first job, I had no idea what I was doing. It was difficult because I was catching the train to work and carrying tools and 13 hour days, you know. And then the second job, I sort of got good at a couple of things. I had a good relationship with the person who was giving me the work. So that sort of made things a bit more positive. By the time I did this third job that we're about to go to, I got my driver's license. And if you live in Auckland, you'll know that that is a pretty big deal. You kind of can't get around without a driver's license. It's hard work, as a builder anyway. I mean, you could catch the train if you work in an office, but when you've got all these tools and... So I got my driver's license, I'd had a couple of years of building, and I was getting the hang of it. film the side because it's a movie theater quite ironic that basically this is yeah a movie theater so we completely stripped this out and in fact this balcony right here is where we threw all the rubbish down onto the street down there and we had to do that like five in the morning because it is a street where cars drive it's some I can't remember how many cinemas there are but we rebuilt every single cinema and I think we added cinemas as well we did the whole entryway and all the plasterboard it was like two layers of 16 mil on one side and then a wall and then a gap and then another wall and then more very soundproof so this is where i first did finishing carpentry it was where i worked with another carpenter uh, who taught me quite a lot he actually taught me how to do finishing carpentry if you go to the top of the these stairs that are inside here you'll see a long hallway i did the skirting all in that hallway and the architraves and everything because the hallway was so long we had to join the skirting the carpenter that i was working with he kind of gave me a goal now the goal was, Scott, if you can join it so I can't see it, you're doing a good job. That's your, that's your goal. So, you know, I did a few, you know, you can see the kind of join, there's a little bump there. I tried to sand it, didn't really work. But then eventually I, I got one that was mint and he had to walk up and down the hallway trying to find the join. And then he came up to me and he was deaf, he couldn't hear a thing, so he came up to me and he just said, good, good job. So. I, I kind of got the hang of carpentry on this job. This is where I started feeling like a carpenter. Of course I wasn't a carpenter at all. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, 15 years of building. Huh? 